So up to this point, we have decided the preliminary data which is required for the design. Now the next step is to estimate the tube side heat transfer coefficient. Here in Shailen tube heat exchanger, we have to calculate uh, tube side heat transfer coefficient as well as shell side heat transfer coefficient. First we discuss about how to calculate tube side heat transfer coefficient. We have already discussed how to calculate tube side heat transfer coefficient in our double pipe heat exchanger chapter. But let us uh, further revise it. So, to estimate the tube side heat transfer coefficient, there are equations which is Seidel Tate and Hussein equations which we can use, which is based on the value of the Reynolds number. If Reynolds number is uh, greater than or equal to 10 raise to 4, the uh, relation between the Nusselt, Reynolds, and Prandtl is this. If the fluid is in a transition zone, so that the value of Reynolds is between 2100 to 10 raise to 4, then we can use this equation. And if the value of Reynolds number is less than 2100, it means it is lamellar, then we can use this relation. Okay. So, by using this relation, we can find out the value of Nusselt and the, uh, value, uh, the Nusselt is equal to HLC by K, where LC is the characteristic length. For, so, for our, it is diameter. So, by after getting value of Nusselt, we can easily calculate the value of H, which is our heat transfer coefficient for the tube side. One another method to calculate the value of a heat transfer coefficient is by using this equation. In this equation, H is the heat transfer coefficient. GH is the factor which we can, uh, the value of GH, the value of this factor we can get from this graph, from the value of Reynolds number. So, uh, this is 10 raise to 4. So, uh, from this, after this, it will, uh, the flow will be, will be uh, the flow would be turbulent. So, we, uh, this is the only one line. Before that, according to the ratio of L by D, these are the different lines. So, from the Reynolds number and the L by D ratio, we can easily get the value of this factor J. So, it is the factor which enables the data for the laminar and turbulent flow to be represented. And by putting the value of uh, this factor in this equation, uh, Reynolds number in this equation and Brentel number, this is the viscosity correction factor, viscosity at the wall temperature and viscosity as at the mean temperature. By putting the value in this equation, we can also calculate the value of heat transfer coefficient for the tube side by using this equation. Okay. Now, tube side pressure drop, we have already discussed equation for the tube side pressure drop in our previous equation. So, let us revise this topic once. The tube side pressure drop can be calculated by knowing the number of tube passes, NP and the length of the tube. So, this is the two parameter which we have already decided in our preliminary stages of the heat exchanger. The pressure drop for the tube side fluid is given by, this is the fanning equation. We have already discussed about the fanning equation in our uh, compact heat exchanger chapter. So, this is the equation which by which we can calculate the pressure drop. There is one another pressure drop because of the change of the direction in the passes introduces an additional pressure drop because in a shell and tube heat exchanger, we know that when the fluid enter into, into the shell, there is a larger area for the fluid. And when the fluid enters in the tube, there is a contraction of the area. After passing one pass, again the fluid have larger area, so that the expansion. So due to this contraction and expansion, there is another pressure drop. So due to sudden expansion and contractions that the, the tube fluid experiences during the return, which is accounted for the allowing four velocity heads per passes. So there is an additional pressure drop due to this, due to that expansion and contraction. So Summation of these two equation will give the total pressure drop for the tube side pressure drop. So, this is the equation to calculate the tube side pressure drop. Okay. Now, next step, uh, we have already decided the Beffel spacing, which is uh, generally between 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 of the shell diameter. After that, we have to estimate the cell shed heat transfer coefficient. Now, sorry, cell shed heat transfer coefficient. Now, Shell side heat transfer coefficient is very difficult to calculate. We have two methods to calculate to estimate the shell side heat transfer coefficient. One is the Kahn's method, and the second method is the Bell Delaware method. First, we will discuss the basic method, which is Kahn's method. After that, in our uh, next vi upcoming videos, we will discuss we will discuss the Del Delaware methods. So. This is the shell side 
flow pattern uh, this is the different suppose this is a shell into heat exchanger this is the shell this portion shows the shell these are the buffers okay these are the buffers and this shows the different tubes now here you can see that when fluid the flow path of the fluid is like this okay so when fluid flows between these two buffer here you can see that between the tip of this buffer at that time the flow is the cross flow here you can see that the flow over the surface of the tube by creating by this fluid is a cross flow and when fluid is going to pass through this area at that time the flow is uh, counter or parallel to the fluid which is flowing inside the tubes so the flow pattern in the shell of a segmentally buffered heat exchanger is complex okay and this makes the prediction of the shell side heat transfer coefficient and pressure drop much more difficult than for the tube side through the buffers are installed to direct the flow across the tubes the actual flow of the main stream of the fluid will be mixture of cross flow between the buffers coupled with axial flow in the buffer window this is the buffer window so this area this area is the buffer windows okay so as we have discussed there is a cross flow within this area and there is a parallel or counter flow within this window buffer window okay so not all the fluid flow of uh, uh, fluid flow follows this path some will leak through gaps okay there uh, there are something leakage between this uh, shell surface and the buffer uh, between this clearance bit, uh, clearance of this buffer and the shell between the clearance of the shell and the uh, between clearance of the buffer diameter buffer hole and the tube hole so not all the fluid flow follows this path some will leak through the gaps formed by the clearance that have to be allowed for the fabrication and assembly of the heat exchanger because uh, there must be a hole in this buffer for the tube to pass from that so the buffer hole is higher than the outer diameter of the tube so there must be a clearance between the tube and the buffer hole so some fluid will pass through that clearance so uh, all fluid are not going to follow this path some are going to be bypass through this uh, hole or through this clearance okay the complex flow, pa flow pattern on the shell side and the great number of variables involved make it difficult to predict the shell side coefficient and the pressure drop with complete assurance in this method so that the kulls uh, method the first method in this method used for design of exchanger prior to about 1960 no attempt was made to account by, uh, for the leakage and the bypass streams so in kulls method uh, there is no consideration of the leakages and the bypasses uh which is already in the shell and tube heat exchanger so let's discuss the first basic method to find out the heat transfer coefficient at the shell side which is kulls method for finding the shell side heat transfer coefficient so this method was based on the experimental work on the commercial exchangers with the standard tolerances and will give reasonably satisfactory prediction of the heat transfer coefficient for a standard design the prediction of the pressure drop is less satisfactory because we have not consider all the leakages in this method as the pressure drop is more affected by the leakages and bypassing than the heat transfer okay so let's understand kulls method step by step first we need to find out the cross area cross flow area we have already discussed this cross flow area in our previous lecture so let's discuss in a detail uh, uh, suppose this is a shell and tube heat exchanger here only the this is the center of the shell and tube heat exchanger which is the shell diameter okay just a minute here this is a shell diameter this is the space between two buffer which is spacing which is denoted by capital b okay so here only space between two buffers are shown in this figure in this region between two consecutive buffer of a heat exchanger the mean flow direction is normal to the tubes here the normal direction is only normal direction of the fluid is considered so the fluid is going to flow normal in the normal direction of this tubes okay. so the fluid is going to flow in this direction okay so we have to find out the cross flow area it means we have to find out this area okay so for that we have width which is b 
we we just need to find out this value of this l value of this line okay so value of this line so to find out value of this line we see that the fluid velocity is subjected to continuously fluctuation owing to the reduce in flow area as fluid is going to flow at uh, at this point then it will going to flow over the surface of the tube so the velocity is going to be fluctuating because of the reduction in flow area because of the outer surface of the tubes when the fluid is crosses the tube row in comparison with the flow area in the space between two consecutive row okay so the area is going to continuously change additionally the width of the shell cross section changes from zero at the bottom and top of the shell and the maximum in the center of tube so here you can see that at the bottom the area is zero as we are moving from at the top the area is continuously increasing at the center it is going to be maximum again it is going to be decrease as we are moving to upward and at the top point again the area for the fluid is going to be zero okay so hence is it, hence it is not possible to define a single value of the cross flow area so this means that in order to define fluid velocity the definition of the fluid area must be arbitrary so kern considers a flow area that correspond with the tube row at the shell central plane so this this is the central plane which shown in this figure and well uh, we shall call pt which is the tube pitch okay here you can see that this is a tube pitch this is the distance between the center of the tube consecutive tubes and the c is the clearance here you can see that this is the clearance between the tube which is denoted by c or free distance between the two adjacent tubes in the same row now the number of clearance exist in the central row now if we want to calculate the number of clearance it means this all clearance if you want to add this all clearance obtained by approximately by it can be obtained approximately by dividing the shell diameter so what we need to do this is the shell diameter if we divide this shell diameter by this pitch then we will get this all clearance value of this all clearance okay so this is the shell diameter divided by the pitch so it gives the number of tubes okay into this clearance so this ds by pt into c this portion this ds into c divided by pt this value gives this all this clearance c value of this c okay so we have value of all this clearance so the summation of this lines so this total length okay so this total clearance length we will get by ds into c by pt okay ds is the diameter of the shell if we divide it by the pt by the pitch and multiply it by the multiply it by the this clearance if we uh, ds by pt it gives the number of tubes into this clearance it means this length and this length into this width which is beta will give us the cross flow area at the center which is the maximum cross flow area clear beta is the buffer spacing the area of any this clearance beta is b and it result the shell flow area so this is the shell cross shell flow area for the maximum shell cross flow area for this shell at the bit exterior i hope it is clear now now it is possible to define mass velocity which is mass flow rate divided by the cross flow area which is w by as for the shell fluid okay now from that we can easily calculate the reynolds number which is gs into de this is the effective diameter we have discussed about the effective diameter for the different pitch uh, for the square pitch and for the triangle pitch in our previous lecture so you should refer it so this is the equivalent diameter effective diameter <coughs> into gs in, divided by mu by using this equation we can easily calculate reynolds number shell side reynolds number this L suffix h shows for the shell now what is the correlation for the heat transfer coefficient so by using this equation we can easily calculate this is a, a nacelle and its relation with the reynolds and prandtl this is the viscosity correction factor uh, mu by mu w for very viscous fluid otherwise the value of this uh, mu by mu w will be 1 
So by using this equation, we can easily get the value of H O, which is the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So this is the Kern's method to find out the heat, uh, shell side heat transfer coefficient. After getting shell side heat transfer coefficient, we can easily calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient, including fouling factor. So by we know this equation, we have discussed in our uh, first chapter about overall heat transfer coefficient, including fouling. So by using this equation, we can easily calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. So now we have to compare this calculated overall heat transfer coefficient with this assumed overall heat transfer coefficient. If the uh, value is uh, in between 30 percent, then you can go further. If the value is not between uh, allow, allowable like in 30 percent, then you have to again change the value of assumed overall heat transfer coefficient based on this calculated overall heat transfer coefficient and again do the all the steps uh, and again repeat again you have to repeat all these steps for the design and if yes then you have to estimate the tube and shell side pressure drop okay so now what is the we have already discussed about the tube side pressure drop now what is the shell side pressure drop so according to Kern, the pressure drop in the shell fluid is proportional to the number of times the fluid crosses the tube bundles okay and uh, if nb is the number of buffers then we know that the shell fluid cross the bundles nb plus 1 okay if there are uh, two buffers then the fluid is going to cross three uh, bundles three times so the pressure drop is also proportional to the length of the path at every bundle cross which can be represented by the shell diameter the friction factor can be correlated as a function of shell reynolds number as we know so the pressure drop is proportional to the friction as well as the flow path as well as the uh, how many times the fluid is going to cross the buffers bundle so that the nb plus 1 this is the correction factor for the viscosity this is the mass velocity and density with the effective diameter and this is the shell diameter ds so for the red, uh, different Reynolds number for the Reynolds number less than 500 we can use this expression to finding the friction coefficient and for Reynolds number uh, greater than 500 we can use this correlation for finding the friction value of f friction factor so by using that equation we can easily calculate the pressure drop if the pressure drop of shell side and tube side is within the specification within the permissible limit then the design is is going to be accepted if the calculated pressure drop of the shell side and tube side is not within the permissible limit according to the customer requirement or according to the design requirement then you have to again repeat the, the design steps from this then you have to change the tube size or the tube diameter or the material of the tube you can uh, change that and uh, you have to calculate this all the steps again to get the pressure limit pressure within the limit so these are the uh, design steps for the shell and tube heat exchanger design by the Kern's method we can uh, also use the second method which is bell delaware method to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient at the shell side to calculate overall heat transfer coefficient at the tube side, the method will remain same. The bell delaware method is the only method for calculating the heat transfer coefficient at the shell side. 